Plants like this are very popular in the house plant market in many parts of the world. So popular in fact that many people throw them out after they finish blooming. Why would you do that? What if I told you that these plants are actually perennials that can live between 20 to 30 years, getting bigger and better as they mature, and that it's really easy to keep them year after year, saving you cash but also improving the plants that you already have. So why are they so popular? Well, because they have gorgeous blooms that come in a variety of colours and forms, unusual in that the petals are reflexed unlike the majority of other flowers, they have fascinating marble leaves and are very accommodating to look after, provide you follow a few key care requirements. So today we'll look at three things. One, what variety is available. Two, we'll cover care requirements and make sure that you stick around for the end for number three to find out how to take them through dormancy and avoid certain key pitfalls. In fact, it's all you'll ever need to know about indoor cyclamen. Let's get started. And we are in. Okay, everything you'll see today is a hybrid from the species cyclamen persicum probably. I've grown these hybrids for many years, sometimes called houseplant cyclamen, sometimes called florist cyclamen. These are frost tender plants, not to be confused with the hardier frost hardy plants that you can grow outside all year round. There are around 11 other so-called tender species of cyclamen, usually found filling the air with their sweet scents around eastern Mediterranean countries, but hybrids of cyclamen persicum are likely to be the ones you have if you're growing them indoors. So let's begin with some of the lovely varieties you might not have yet seen but might be able to get hold of depending on where you are in the world. I have a very modest collection here in the greenhouse. Mine are kept at a minimum of 12 degrees Celsius which is roughly the lowest you can actually get away with and still have them bloom. Although the low temperature makes that process very slow which isn't actually a bad thing as they should still be blooming their socks off well into spring. You can see here how many buds there are yet to come on my plants and we'll come back to temperature a little later on when we cover the curry requirements. The most common varieties available start in white through to shades of pink, purples and reds and you mostly see the solid colours for sale here in the UK garden centres but they aren't the most beautiful or the most interesting varieties in my humble opinion. If you're lucky you might be able to lay your hands on some new scented varieties only recently reintroduced into the hybrids and they're all the better for it. The fringed bloom varieties like this one here are more difficult to source especially in the UK. UK, but along with this bicolour variety you can see that I've managed it just by doing some online research. If you're mega mega lucky you might be able to find some like these visible only to me in the form of digital photos on Instagram and more's the pity. But you might also be able to find some double flowered ones. There are just more and more varieties becoming available especially after a little bit of a blip in production during the worst of the Covid years. So I'm looking forward to these varieties becoming more readily available here in the UK. I recently found these dipped in glitter but we won't dwell what? on that too much. And so on to the basic care requirements. So it's important to remember that these plants naturally grow in hot places where there can be drought in summer and less light due to canopy cover from the trees. So cyclamen then go dormant during the summer months, dying back to their tubers and only come back into growth during the cooler, wetter months of winter and early spring. So keeping that in mind should help when deciding how to care for them. So as mine begin back into growth again during the autumn, I give them as much bright light as I I can give them but not direct sun as they'll soon wilt. The two main growth factors where most people come unstuck are watering and temperature. You want them to be in a room that's slightly too cold for you to sit in comfortably. The living room is usually too warm, they prefer to sit between 12 to 18 degrees celsius. 15 would be ideal. For me here in the UK that means the kitchen, bedrooms, bathrooms but not the living room. Allow them to dry out between waterings and I usually prefer bottom watering mainly because they can be susceptible to tuber rot if the water gets into the cracks on the tuber's surface but I do occasionally top water as I use a general purpose fertiliser tablets during the growing season of winter which are placed in the top of the pot but don't overdo it with fertiliser as too much can result in too many leaves at the expense of blooms. Let them dry out and stay dry for a day or two before watering them again. Too much water and too little water both result in wilting and yellowing leaves. As I usually bottom water that means leaving them sitting in a tray of water. You can't let them sit in that for too long. I'm well used to knowing how long I can get away with it. Best thing is to leave it for a few hours and then tip it out and let it drain away. Always remove the dead blooms and the bloom spikes from the base of the tuber unless you want to collect the seed. Mm -hmm. 
Now in terms of potting media, I use a general purpose peat-free compost with added perlite or grit, although they don't appear to be too fussy and will grow in other compost mixes. And now for the best and most fun part, that is, keeping them till next year. So why do it? They're cheap enough to replace. Well, this is true, but firstly, it's fun and it's satisfying to keep a plant going that should naturally live for 20 to 30 years. Two, you can produce big old plants with bigger and more blooms than your mates have. And three, and it's a little known fact actually, that girls and probably guys are very impressed where size is concerned. Allowing your plants to go dormant is actually fairly easy once you understand how they naturally do it. In the eastern Mediterranean countries where cyclamen naturally grow, spring and summer brings rising temperatures, decreasing rainfall and less light due to an increase in the tree canopy cover, which triggers cyclamen to stop blooming, set seed, drop their leaves and then come springtime you should actually do your best to replicate that. Allow them to bloom through winter in the cooler temperatures, then when it warms up reduce your watering and allow the leaves to turn yellow. Don't completely stop watering. Desiccation can kill them as I found to my cost. Just a little trickle. I find the mini varieties or anything with tiny little tubers are more difficult to overwinter. And while we're on the subject of tubers, many people have said to me that those don't have tubers. They will have, they'll just be very, very small. Don't forget, these are kept in ideal conditions. Anything that's sold in the shops will be likely to be flowering and producing way more leaves than its tiny little tubers can usually cope with. So that is a little bit of a risk. But once you've kept it for a while, that tuber will expand and you'll get a more robust plant. I also find that cyclamen can go into a semi-dormant state with just a few very small young leaves left. Don't panic if that happens, it's fine. Just keep them in a shady place that's warm and water very sparingly. You can reverse this process in the autumn by bringing them into more light, cooler temperatures and increasing the watering. Now, if you live in a temperate climate like here in the UK, much of this process is actually already in place with the natural seasons. Obviously, what they experience outside in those Mediterranean countries is a lot more extreme, but if I keep them in the greenhouse or in the house, I can actually replicate that pretty easily. If you don't live in a temperate climate, then your task is all the more difficult. Tropical people, well, I'm sorry, you may need to store the tuber in a fridge for a couple of months. In terms of pests, they get all the usual sap suckers and slugs and snails do enjoy eating the stalks of the leaves or the stalks of the blooms. I've personally found that cyclamen mites tend to be the most troublesome for me. These are tarsonomid mites and these are indicated by puckering in the leaves and few or no blooms for that season. These are microscopic little mites. They cannot be seen with the naked eye. They cannot be seen with a hand lens. They need to be seen with a microscope. But you'll know you've got them if you've got that puckering. I use a sulfur hot box to kill my pests, but if that's not an option for you, contact insecticides can work just as well, as can systemics. But the big downside with systemics is that cyclamen are actually very prone to mutations, rendering the blooms useless for that season. It won't kill the plants, they will come back fine again next year, but you might miss an entire season of blooms. Another alternative is to dip the foliage into a bleach solution for a couple of minutes. Yep, you heard me correctly there. Wash it all off afterwards, the mites will be dead, the plants will be fine. You'll have to trust me on that one. But if you don't trust me on that one and you don't want to risk bleach, it's surprising at how effective simply washing the foliage down with a hose pipe can be. There's a reason, other than just predators, that you rarely see huge infestations of mites in the garden. They just don't like the rain. If I've missed your burning question, then please do ask it in the comments below. And I know I said that you won't need to buy more plants if you take your existing ones through dormancy, but who am I kidding? You're going to buy more plants aren't you hit the like button if that's true or if you've got any value at all from this video and if you're inspired by cyclamen and feel up to a leisurely look through my collection from a couple of years ago then this video here offers you that opportunity i'll see you on the next one bye